Okay, so next we need our die. Ah, little dollar store container here. So we need to fill this up with whatever level that we're going to be putting our things in, our leather. Alright, so this is white vinegar. That should cover everything, that should be more than enough. And, yeah, whatever. Use that for something else. Then we've got our steel wool. That's surprising how hard it is to find steel wool. Stick your steel wool in. Normally you'd cut it up, but I don't have to worry about fitting it in through the top. Let's get those fully submerged. Alright, need this to crack open because the chemical reaction is going to cause some outgassing. And we'll let this sit for about a week, two days, whatever. Do that time. Okay, so our ferric acetate is, our ferric acetate or our vinegar solution dyeing thingy is almost ready. So we're going to get ready to dye this. Off camera I just uh, dremeled out a little bit more of a line here because in the movie screen accurate is straight across. So I'll just, I just made this just a little hint straighter. So I still have my bottom thing but eh, whatever. Now uh, because your ferric acetate is an acid, on it'll uh, initiate the rust on your metal pieces on your rivets so if you want you can try to protect them a little bit when I was painting things I would sometimes use a little bit of hot glue and cover up my LEDs use low temperature hot glue if you're gonna do that um, I'm gonna put a little bit of hot glue on here because it'll help get into the cracks and I'm gonna uh, because it's simple I'm gonna put a little uh, mask off the smooth parts on the rivets now it will the uh, acid will probably get in through the sides and start some rusting on the inside a little, but eh, do what you can. Alright, so for the flat parts... Be careful with your knife. I'm not going to be held responsible for you being stupid and cutting yourself. Okay, and there you go. You got a little piece of tape covering up your metal. The acid will have a little bit of a tougher time getting in on that. Okay, so now this is sealed up, let's get this started. We've got our baking soda right here. We're gonna add this to the water. This is a disposable container. Our rubber gloves. And no, we are not reenacting the love scene of from Fight Club on camera. I mean, we're not reenacting the love scene from Fight Club. Uh, all right. Told that this stuff is supposed to go more of a brownie color, but this is a uh, murky gray. Okay, so yes, moving scene locations again because the laundry room gives you more table space and it's warmer than the garage. I tested out the solution, the ferric, the, yeah, the ferric acetate on some different pieces of leather that are strangely enough from the same brand. I just cleared this in the baking soda water solution. But yeah, 
got some really good black and some lighter black where the label was, but hey, this is going to be covered up with the belt anyway. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. And the backing of the belt was pretty decent. So it's just setting that on some newspaper for a minute. All right, we got our ferric acid tape here. Huh. The steel wool is a little brown, but... Okay, so I've already sealed up the uh, PKE meter holster. So let's dip this in. And I've noticed that once we dip it in, it loosens up the leather a little bit. All right. So yeah, this darker color tends to dye black much easier than the lighter shade of the same brown. It's a little more pliant. But yeah, so you can see right where the label is, it's a uh, lighter color. It's going to work they have the cardboard on. But eh. What are you going to do? For a $9 tape measure holster, I can't really complain. Yeah, almost instantly black-ish. Charcoal black. All right. Yeah, where the label was on this, I don't think I'm going to get that any darker. But this will be on the back side anyways, and partially covered up by the belt. And then as soon as I dip it in the baking soda water, it's got its reaction. I'll wait until the bubbles stop. Now I've got this. So I'll let this stuff dry. Let it dry, rinse it with water, blah, blah, blah. There we go. Oh yes, and it's good to do this in ventilated area, but the garage is too cold. It's winter, soon. And yes, that is a Metroplex in the laundry room. For the three tape measure holsters, uh, with Don Bishop, or Bishop Don Miguel's dye formula put into action, it needs to still dry a little bit. And here's the leg hose connector thingy. Just plug that in. And then plug it into your leg. Blah, blah. Fine. And there you go. And you can see, yeah, varying effects to the different holsters, which is really weird because they were all the same brand, but yeah. And so this is what your belt holsters will look like once die. So, oh, and if you are going to do something like this for your Lakos, try not to leave any sharp things in that can catch on the, on the back of your pack strap but it just looks a little more high-tech. Okay, so here we are about after a week, and well, after a few days of fully drying properly, uh, the black starts to fade. So some of these I had to dry th a dye three or four times just to get the black to stick. And even then, uh, the leather fades a little bit, but it's okay now. I've uh, noticed once you add a little bit of polish to this, like a shoe polish, the black really comes out. So this is the only one that has uh, that's been fully polished. I did half of this with polish so you can see the color difference and how much it helps. Now if you're going to use shoe polish, don't be stupid. Don't add one that already has a black dye in it. I just use a wax. I use, this is just my regular boot shoe polish. I like red wings. I love the black Gore-Tex. So this particular one is Pine Burnt Mink Oil Beeswax. So yeah, just basically polishing whatever, take care of your leather. Oh, and before we do that, I was talking about uh, protecting your rivets. So even with the seals on, you can see on the edges how we got just a little bit of rust right along the edge right there. In where I did not protect, like in the back here and here, the rust really went at it. So yeah, either add low temperature hot glue in there to seal that up or even melt in a little bit of beeswax that'll really help uh, cover it so yeah on the curved uh, rivets or buttons or whatever the uh, um, 
ferric acetate got in. On the flat side, sealing them up uh, with just the masking tape or a cellophane, cellophane the, the plastic tape. That worked way better, so we got a lot less rust on these ones. And if you want, you can treat your rust afterwards at work. We've got uh, a zinc spray. I really have had mixed results with the zinc spray. Uh, it's supposed to seal it up and prevent any rust from getting out of it again. I've had to clean rust off stuff at work all the time. It's always a hassle. And no, I would not be spraying zinc spray in my laundry room. You don't want to breathe that garbage. So I'll probably just go through this manually and add maybe a little mineral oil or some clear coating to seal it up. But rust is always something to fight. So anyways, yeah, just go through and polish in your polish. Yeah, polish in your polish. And if you're stupid and gob it on, well, you're going to get some gobby stains on your suit. But if you polish it right, it should end up perfectly dry afterwards. Just work it in and there will be no issues. And so basically just keep taking care of your leather. And if you have any questions, uh, just stick around after fetish night and ask me the people that I'm, I mean, just stick around and ask some of your friends that know stuff about leather for some strange reason. And yeah, that would be it. Take care of your leather and it'll look awesome. Thank you. Thank you.